Hi, my name is Dr. Don Wicker, and we're going to continue our lecture series on organizational behavior. Today is lecture series number eight, and our topic is leading effectively. Today what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about leading effectively. What exactly does leading effectively mean? We're going to look at the role of power and political behavior in the leadership process, and we're going to look at two traditional modes of leadership, traits of behavior. So what is leadership? Well, leadership is developing ideas and vision, living by values that support those ideas, of course, and influencing others uh, to embrace those ideas, and making hard decisions about human and other resources. That's what leadership is basically all about. Leaders' use of power. Let's think about this. There's five uses of power in leadership. Think about this. We have reward power, which is a reward for uh, doing a particular task that can be used as a power in leadership. You have corrosive power, which is punishment. You have reverent power, and we have a lot of reverent people who have charisma, who have followers because of their charisma. That's reverent power. We have expert power, which could be an example of a computer technology expert who knows all about technology. That gives him that power in his particular area, which is expert power. And we have, finally, legitimate power. And legitimate power is our presidency, for instance. He's our, the president of the United States. He has legitimate power with that position. Speaking on lines of the, the presidency, think about political behavior. Well, uh, think about political behavior and organizational politics. Political behavior basically is an attempt by individuals to influence the behaviors of others in the course of events in organizations in order to protect their self-interest, meet their own needs, and advance their own goals. You think about political behavior, you think about power, you think about leadership. Now, on the other hand, organizational politics. What about organizational politics? How can that tie into leading? And think about the actions by individual teams or leaders and in order to acquire, develop, and use power and other uh, resources in order to obtain preferred outcomes. And that's just part of our organizational politics in leading effectively. Now, some of the drivers of political behavior, think about some of the drivers of political behavior. Of course, we have disagreement over goals. We have different ideas about the organization and its problems. We have different information about the situation, which you could say happens all the time in politics. You have the need to allocate scarce resources, and you have decision-making procedures and performance measures uh, that are uncertain or complex. And of course, you have the reward system that fosters just about everything in um, political behavior. So to tie that into the trait model of leadership, what about the trait model of leadership? Well, traits of most successful leaders, what are some of the traits? And we, and we think about this. Of course, leaders have to be intelligent. They have to have uh, maturity and breadth. They have to have achievement and drive and integrity. And integrity is real important when you think about successful leaders. Let's talk about the trait model of leadership. What about the trait model? Well, just think about some inadequacies of the trait model of leadership. Of course, you think about leaders, you think about the no consistent patterns between traits and leader effectiveness. That's just one of the inadequacies. Another inadequacy could be the physical characteristics um, that are likely related to situational factors. And when leadership is more complex than the trait approach assumes. You think about leadership, you think about the trait approach, and you think about how complex it is. And those are just some of the inadequacies of the trait model of leadership. Switching to the behavior model of leadership, of course, uh, it focuses on what leaders actually do and how they do it. So you think about behavior model of leadership, you think about what a leader actually does. And of course, consideration and extent to which uh, the leader has a relationship with subordinates is real important because subordinates are always looking at what a leader does and that two-way communication is very important too. And you think about initiating structure. A leader defines and prescribes the role of subordinates in order to set and accomplish different goals. And you think about the focus of a leader in the behavioral model because it's actually what a leader does on a day-to-day -day basis. You start thinking about leadership and the effectiveness and, and what happens in the consideration of effectiveness. You start thinking about when is consideration effective in leadership? Well, think about routine tasks, of course, prevent job satisfaction. You think about someone performing a routine task on a daily basis. Well, they're not necessarily satisfied. And you think about the effective consideration, of course. You think about team members. Uh, they must learn something new. 
course, involvement in decision-making processes is real important. And followers always desire the participative style of leadership, which is real important when you think about the consideration of effective leaders. When is initiating structure effective? Well, we looked at the consideration effective. Well, when is uh, initiating structure effective? Think about the task that satisfies employees. Well, employees rely on a leader for direction, of course. Employees are uh, predisposed toward directive leadership. And you, and you think about the outcome pressures imposed by someone other than a leader, which can affect the effectiveness of that, that leadership style. So uh, to sum it up, if you think about the, the more individuals that are reporting to one particular person, the more effective that leadership tends to be. Finally, what are the styles of situational leadership model? What are the styles? Think, think about a couple of styles here. We have four basic styles. Delegating styles, the telling style, the selling style, and the participative style. And you can understand that by using the acronym DTPS. DTPS. And of course, delegating, of course, uh, used when followers have a readiness. Their readiness is high. Um, and at the telling style, of course, that's when you're telling a person what to do. You use that when the follower's readiness is very low. But think about the participative style. Individuals participating in the leadership process. That's when followers' readiness is moderately high. And of course, the selling style is when follower readiness is moderately low. So I think the ideal style would be the participative style, which is one that a lot of leaders uh, aspire to obtain. That concludes our lecture series, lecture series number eight. Again, our topic was leading effectively. We want to thank you for tuning in to our organizational behavior series, and we look forward to talking with you again in lecture series number nine.